uh, we live back from bangalore tomorrow uh, so very interesting week we'll just uh, look at what, what we talked about last time we said he closes <coughs> above 18300 futures the bulls can continue else it's a wait and watch uh, we said that it's a mixed signal all depends on friday's closing we were inherently in bullish bias because of the fi data which is uh, 1 lakh calls and 46 hips plus 650 crore by 1000 crore by everything being bullish uh, and we also talked about watching the candle which was formed on weekly time frame right now weekly time frame was a kind of a, a no candle because it was like a doji with very long wicks but here is what happened right <laughs> nifty formed a bullish hammer or bullish dragonfly doji on friday and if you had uh, seen um, if you follow me on twitter you would have seen that i had put out a alert in the middle of the day saying that there is a dragonfly doji getting formed in nifty so that dragonfly doji was formed and today or bullish hammer depending on how you look at it because it was about the support and today we formed it had very good volumes right and today we formed a confirmation candle and that candle looks like it's above the long running covid trend line so bullish hammer followed by uh, dragonfly doji uh, trend line sorry going into the uh, bullish hammer followed by confirmation candle which is a marugozu going into the trend line looks like things have taken a turn around and we might be in for some bullishness right now again if you look at bank nifty bank nifty is forming a series of uncertain candles now it's still consolidating above uh, all time high but here is the important thing right it's not going down from the all time high it is testing the all time high but it's not really going down it is uh, uh, it's just consolidating and you know forming a series of the indecision candles there's no rejection from all time high <clears throat> right so that's that and dollar it's very tricky so we had said that it is almost touching the uh, top of this channel it seems like it has broken out of the channel now it remains to be seen whether this is a, a breakout or a fake out but as of now at least it has seen seems like it's gone out of this trend line it also seems like it is gone out of this uh, basically it's a, it looks like a triangular breakout right <laughs> so um, <clears throat> so basically dollar looks like it has broken out of a triangular wedge but we don't know um, know that yet for sure right so that's one now let's go to option chain data today extremely bullish data <clears throat> lot of calls added sorry lot of puts added lot of calls removed 18200 has put and wind 8250 has put and wind 300 has hardly any addition in fact none of the strikes above 18300 uh, atm strikes have any addition addition happen is happening only far away strikes lot of uh, put addition in fact and if you look at the last second half of the day uh, mixed signals nothing much there but the headline is that option chain has suddenly turned bullish and why not because if you look at friday's option chain that was actually even steven but if you look at thursday's option chain there was plenty of resistance uh, above Oh, but this is a problem. So this is the expiry, right? So if you look at twenty fifth May expiry on May eighteenth, this is what the option chain looked like. Lot of resistance above eighteen thousand uh, two hundred, right? But if you look at the same on May nineteenth, it has evened out, and on May twentieth, sorry, May twenty second, that is today. Lot of puts here, not much of calls here. Eighteen thousand two hundred is a huge support and it looks like uh, this has completely turned around right so option chain data is very positive finally if you look at fidi data <coughs> sorry uh, interestingly fidi data is bullish as ever there are as many uh, calls outstanding as there are puts 
which is usually a sign of bullishness. And if you look at a very tiny gap between calls and puts, normally in neutral markets, puts are way more than calls, but it is almost equal, which means it's bullish. And today's activity, FI sold 7K calls, but they also sold 23K puts, which means overall bullish. Stocks, 1500 crore buy by FI plus DIA combined bullish. Uh, this is neutral. Um, Nifty buy, Bank Nifty sell, interesting, but overall neutral, right? And if you look at the overall FII index future OI, it is very slightly negative, which is also a good thing to take away. So basically, if you ask me, my verdict on this today is that I think the bullish trend is highly likely to continue, right? And I know it is against economic fundamentals. I know there are 100 ways to be short Nifty, 100 reasons to be short Nifty, recession coming, economy not doing well, yay, wo, blah, blah, blah. But the truth is, <clears throat> liquidity is bigger than any economic reality. If there is money available for cheap, people will buy stuff. And the, in this case, the people, I mean, FIA, DA, etc. will chase uh, any kind of index in a speculative bubble with the money they are getting for cheap from central banks. So if there is any kind of hope that there is going to be interest rate reduction, etc., we will see markets uh, going up in the short term, right? Um, this is not 6K, this is 7K. Let me change that. Overall, <clears throat> what do I want to <clears throat> do here? I would really want to do uh, option buy. And I'll tell you why I would like to do option buy. And this is crazy, right? <laughs> So I was looking at option prices this morning, right? And look at this, right? Uh, so first of all, VIX is fairly low. It's around uh, 12 or something. If you look at ATM IV, that's also under 12. Sorry. How do I turn this on? Uh, LTP view. Let me put IV on. IV is on, is it? Oh, okay. ATM IV is 10.8 now, right? That's very low. My problem is Nifty 18,300 call is trading at 81 rupees. Now, let's see what that actually means, right? So, I'm going to put an analysis on that. See, this is the problem. Nifty 18,300 uh, call is available at 18, uh, 81 rupees. The break even is just half a percent away. Market is gone into a scene that it's not even pricing a like somebody is willing to take a bet that it won't go half a percent up. I mean, not precisely because obviously you look at it you using the straddle, but uh, uh, if you have any reason to be bullish, half a percent is all it takes to break even, and there are three days to go to expiry. So if Nifty goes up 1%, right, you basically make 6K on an investment of 4K, which is a risk reward of 1 is to 1.5 or 3 is to 2, right? My problem is if that does not tell you uh, this is looking bad from a volatility seller perspective, I don't know what is the meaning of cheap. So basically, Market is at 18300 plus and an 18300 call is available for just 81 rupees, which means the break even is at 18381. Half a person move, you break even. One person move in the next three days, you make 6K. That is phenomenally low volatility. Options are cheap. When options are cheap and you have any kind of uh, bias on the direction, you should always buy options and not sell options, right? I mean, if you are sure that 75% bullish, 70% bullish, if you have multiple reasons to believe bullish, this is the time when you have to be buying options. See, everybody says key selling options is profitable, yeah, oh, blah, blah, blah. But at the end of the day, you can't really confidently sell something when break even is just half a percent away. It's crazy. Even an ATM straddle, let's just uh, let's look at ATM straddle, right? Not that I will want Want to sell a straddle because I have a bias here. So if I were to look at ATM straddle, the total
sorry i think we temporarily went offline a slightly shaky internet connection here we are back right <clears throat> can somebody confirm that we are back please <clears throat> Yeah, I think we are back. We're back. My sorry, I I just uh, I think I just went offline for a second, right? Yeah. So if you look at ATM straddle, ATM straddle is priced at 0.7 percent either side break even as of this evening. Yeah, <clears throat> are you telling me that <clears throat> uh, market won't move even 0.7 percent in the next uh, three trading sessions? That is a crazy bet to take. I won't sell options at this cheap IV. I would rather look to buy <coughs> options with the, which whatever bias I have. In fact, I won't even bother uh, doing spreads uh, because there's no point in cost reduction now, right? At some point, you have to be buying options and seeing how things will go. So my preferred trade, you know, contrary to all that I usually say at this point is a buy call. I might think of call spreads if you don't like the cost. But your point here, yeah, like, I mean... Uh, then you're playing a risk reward of one is to one or something, right? But why would you want to do it? Because if it's a breakout, you will might print money if Nifty just breaks out, right? So I, I think bull call spread or buy call is my favorite trade. I definitely don't want to play this with selling puts. I definitely don't want to do the spread. Uh, shake a smile. At one point, it is spamming. You're asking the same question 100 times. Please don't do that. There are others who are asking questions. I, I saw the question. I'll take it, right? But... It's very inconsiderate to others who are watching. See, you're asking, where do I find Nifty, Bank Nifty future data? But you're not telling me which future data. Are you talking about FIA future data? Are you talking about future volumes? So the question is not articulated correctly. And if you ask the same question 100 times, what will I do? Please frame it correctly or you can shoot me an email on my email, right? It's not about me. I don't have a problem. But there are a lot of other people who are using this chat, right? You're blocking all their chats. Uh, so now FI future data, where do I get it? You can get it from NSE. So go to NSE, go, open Google and search NSE FI DI data FO and you'll find a link. If not, go to NSE website and look for participant wise OI data. You'll find it there also. But it's extremely difficult to interpret and do the math, which is why we presented it in an easy to understand form, format and sensible. In fact, if you download that Excel sheet, it's kind of complicated. Just there's a Excel sheet in NSE in some repository called participant wise OI data, but it's a pain to understand that uh, uh, on a rolling basis, <laughs> right? Uh, anyway, now coming back to this. So, uh, so uh, yeah, so Rahul is saying there's spinning top on weekly charts. So I'll just explain that also what Rahul means by that. Rahul is saying there's a spinning top bar, doji bar, whatever. You see, Rahul, the problem is this, right? If you look at Nifty Futures, it's not, see, it's a spinning top, right? And the problem with spinning tops is that sp everybody thinks spinning tops is a reversal pattern, but spinning tops are usually not a reversal pattern. Spinning tops are usually a reversal or a continuation pattern. And then there is a problem with this spinning top. So, for example, right? If instead of this pattern, if we had, okay, let me just uh, illustrate that with an example. Because everybody misunderstands spinning tops. I mean, even I did a lot in the beginning. But I'll just clarify that. Uh, char chart used for Nifty option trading spot of future. Dinesh is asking Dinesh for sure, right? For sure, this is uh, it's the answer is uh, if you trade. Future, look at future. Don't look at spot. Future is much more reliable. At least in my experience, I have found uh, this is better. So there are two kinds of things, right? This is a green candle. And there is a uh, red candle here. Now, this is what you call a harami. Right? This is usually a reversal pattern but what is formed in nifty in the last week is this this is not harami 
right? This is what has formed in Nifty in the last week. And this is, like you said, a spinning top. A spinning top could be a continuation pattern or a reversal pattern. And it seems like it is a continuation pattern so far. So I am tempted to go with bullish trend likely to continue, right? But again, uh, so far data indicates that we can only, you know, make our decisions based on so far. Uh, but uh, yeah, the COVID trend line is not fully penetrated into from the, uh, uh, you know, future start, but who knows, right? Thoda either or the if you draw, things can be looking very different and which is why drawing trend lines is not always very certain. You always have to back it with one or two data points. As of now, it looks like Nifty might just go up and uh, if you look at daily time frame, it is a bullish hammer getting confirmed. So yeah, I'll stay long. And the other good thing about, you know, doing the uh, option buy rather than option sell at this point, right? See, if you're wrong, you'll lose quite a bit in the option sell. If you're right, you'll lose less in option buy. And right now, options are also priced cheap. So why not do a less loss trade, which is available for cheap? This is my logic for that. So I'll I'll rather buy options or spreads than do anything else. Futures buy at this point is very tricky. One last thing before we go, we'll just look at... Uh, this week's events, right? Uh, actually, GDP of India is at uh, FOMC minutes on 24th May, which is day after tomorrow. But then that's minutes. That's not the real thing. Um, GDP growth rate, that's 31st May, slightly away. Also, there's a talk of US debt ceiling going on for the next uh, uh, this thing. Uh, for the next 10 weeks, 10, 10 days or so. Uh, yeah, I think I'll slowly introduce FinNifty also into this analysis. So this is our analysis for today. We'll see you again tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow from Bangalore, the old setting. I'm also working on getting a new, very high-risk camera. So very soon you'll see some massive visual changes in this thing. So on that note, I'll take you leave again. Thank you so much for watching. Till we meet again. Uh, till we meet again. What's that? Please take care and keep your capital safe. Bye.